Hello, and welcome to a special episode of the Energy Central Power Perspectives podcast. In typical weeks, this podcast features our host, Jason Price, interviewing important guests from across the energy sector. But in a fun twist on the format, today you'll hear a conversation directly led by the guests themselves. Regular listeners of the Energy Central Power Perspectives podcast will also recognize these repeat guests of ours, Bill Meehan and Pat Hull, both directors at Esri. Listen in as Bill and Pat talk about unlocking the power of GIS, a topic on which they are leading experts within the EnergyCentral.com community. In this episode, you'll hear a conversation detailing their fresh perspective of how GIS can be used as more than a mere repository for asset information. Enjoy! Hi, Bill. Welcome to the podcast. I have a question for you. What does engagement mean to you? Well, thanks, Pat. So what engagement means to me, and for those that know me, I like to think of of terms that begin with the same letter. And uh, engagement really means those three C's, communication, collaboration, and coordination. Of course, we're, we're going to be talking about utilities and, of course, about GIS. And that's what makes GIS really, really fun is because it does those three C's. It allows for communication just like social media, kind of the immediacy. And, of course, because it's based on a map, it really is something that we're so familiar with. So it's communication, coordination. When you've got crews doing one thing in the field and in the office, it really helps coordination. And collaboration is people working together. So engagement really for me means people working together, communicating and collaborating. What does it mean to you, Pat? Well, thanks, Bill. I know that you love that alliteration, but I want you to remember that alliteration almost always annoys And this is not planned, but the word that comes to mind for me when I think about engagement is connecting. That that's the the simple. (laughs) It it is another C, (laughs) and to me, that's the simple roll up of of everything that we're talking about here related to engagement. It's a way to connect people that have a common interest or a common process in a utility. You know that could be planning or construction or outages, uh, safety, maintenance, so, uh, customer connection, a- any of these things. And I like to think it includes two pieces. The easy part or the easier part maybe is what I call pushing information out to people. Customers need to see an outage map, for example, but it also includes pulling information back from people and allowing them to participate. And so many times when you improve that process that's very manual or paper intensive these days, it makes the whole situation more enjoyable and much more efficient. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. The, con- the the word connection really does kind of summarize it, and I really like that. So so why are we doing this podcast? Podcast. What's this all about? Well, we we thought we would do a couple of short uh, little podcasts, maybe 10 minutes or so, on three ideas. And these three ideas have to do with what Pat likes to call sharing, uh, collection, or capturing information, and um, understanding. And in Ezra, we, we, we like to use, and sometimes we hate this, these terms systems, but it's really about a system of engagement, which would be sharing, a system of insight, which would be understanding, a system of records, which is really capturing. So we're going to do a couple of um, uh, uh, podcasts, uh, three podcasts, about 10 minutes each to talk about each of these concepts. Today, we were going to focus on this notion of sharing or engagement, or as Pat likes to say, connection. So Pat, uh, give me some ideas about things that you have seen or you have experienced because you we both worked for power companies uh, for many years of, of things that really didn't go so well in terms of uh, engagement. You know, that's a great, a great question. I wrote a blog a couple of years ago about Mylar balloons, and that is my least favorite type of outage because it's so stupid. It's so preventable when a mylar balloon goes up in the power lines and uh, creates a problem, creates a widespread outage, really that was 100% avoidable. And I remember a number of years ago, 
we looked at the pattern of where these type of outages were occurring and they realized we were not communicating well with the customers and we found that it fell into some discrete neighborhoods where they were very popular i don't know if they sold them at the local stores or there they must have but when we communicated with people in those specific neighborhoods about the threats of using biowar balloons we do decrease the outages significantly so there's an example of where uh, engagement was poor but yet again after we improved it we saw a nice success yeah yeah no that's that's a great story uh and and i've had a, a, some some interesting engagement experiences but the one that i really found to be the most difficult for me was when i was at a city council meeting in my hometown actually where uh, i was being pointed to by some of the the, the residents and citizens came in because what happened is regularly when the city paves the street which they really needed because there was a lot of potholes and then the day or so later uh the, the utility company which i was working for would dig up the street and you'd say well what what went wrong i mean would we just not talking to each other well we did i mean we we gave some information back and forth but the problem was the mechanism was outdated it was spreadsheets and maybe a, you know six or eight months old and i mean things changed over time so when i think about engagement for that particular problem uh one of our customers has done some really good things what they have done is is actually created a mechanism where the city the municipality could in fact update the utilities uh web services or the utilities gis using web services to be able to show where they're paving and so now you could say okay where you're paving and where i'm digging put it together it's gis 101 it's perfect and and having that kind of mechanism in place does require collaboration communication connection and so forth between the municipalities and uh and the utility i mean that's really the essence of what i call a smart city so so that's that's really i think a, a case of 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 good that would be a case of really good engagement and it of course would have solved the problem so pat i mean you and i have both worked on uh, and worked with customers on success stories can you think of some really good customer success stories where engagement was was very very good and using using maps and using gis to do that i'm sure you can think of some i i certainly can and we've written a lot of them in the last few years uh you know as i think about all of these stories they break down into a couple of categories for me i think probably th the most engaging set of stories is around storm response this is a, a time mm -hmm. when everybody is stressed there is damage assessment to be brought in from the field and all hands on deck gathering this information text radio pieces of paper forms uh and then you have to figure out what it is. And you and I both managed operations. When the TV station is on the phone wanting the latest updates, it's very difficult to summarize that information and make any kind of predictions. So uh, I immediately think of uh, Cooperative Energy in Mississippi and their storm center and the way that they automated the damage assessment process and then put a dashboard up in their storm center where they had summarized the information and, you know, with a with a modern dashboard these days, it's quite easy to put a, a gas gauge on any indicator and show if it if it's full, medium or empty, green, yellow, red, mm -hmm. um, and, and give people a real time view of, of what's happening. But of course, there's many others. Uh, you know, as we think about data collection, there's all kinds of data collection processes that occur in utilities, all sorts of in inspections, and those things can be really dramatically improved in big utilities and small utilities by making them quicker and uh, bringing that information back in the digital form that can be put to work immediately. Uh, probably my favorite is around safety. Uh, safety is number one at utilities always. And just improving the transparency of the entire safety process of where people are working and what's happening today. Uh, just tremendous opportunities there. How about you? Yeah, uh, well, I, I agree with you. The the engagement during a, a storm is so critical because uh, things happen so quickly. And I did a story recently in, in uh, for a utility in Oman uh, called Benjenko. And ironically, you, you think of these these places and they don't get 
hurricanes or typhoons, but they did. This this company did, and they had a really good GIS, but they hadn't really done mobility to it uh, with it. And so what they did is they built, uh, um, or they they put in place very quickly. And that was that was a nice thing about this the technology. It went in quickly to be able to do to engage both the, both the field crews and help that came in and they were able to really manage that uh, that storm quite well there was flooding and it was it was pretty serious another one that i kind of like and and uh, in terms of a storm response as well as and i think safety and storm response kind of go together because that's when things can really get hairy uh, there's kind of an initiative uh, around the country called odin it's uh, outage data information management where people can figure out uh not so much just what's going on in their own territories, which they certainly would, but also what's going on in other areas outside their service territory, which they may not have as much information about. So outages outside that, and particularly in, in terms of engaging foreign crews, crews that come in to help during a storm, and and they were they could actually figure out, oh wait, I'm not going to go to this utility because they're in just as bad shape as we are. Would have to go further away to be able to get foreign crews, and it can help manage that process really, really well. Other areas that that I thought engagement was really interesting uh, had to do with uh, things that uh, where, where where information was not really that available. And one of the examples I like is a, a company in Kenya. Uh, it's called Kenjen. It's the it's the basically the power company of of the, of the country of Kenya, and they have all kinds of different kinds of different power plants, and they have lots of renewables and geothermal. And it's really interesting, where they created a GIS portal, which is which is like a dashboard. It's a it's a big dashboard that shows exactly what's going on in this plant, this plant, this plant, and this plant. So now they can can really manage the 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 load and the generation uh, really really well. So Pat. Um, those are those are really great examples. What about what's the what's the technology? I mean, we're from Esri. What's the technology that you think uh, can really help a company if they're looking to improve their engagement? Well, that's a great question. I think there's a couple of ways I'll talk about in terms of pushing and pulling for pushing information to people. There's uh, just a host of web enabled maps and apps, you know, hub sites. Uh, put that information on the internet, make it very, very accessible. And then the mobile tools like Survey123 and even uh, tools within field maps now are just so clean for capturing information on the device that people have in their pocket. And as you reference social media, in a social media kind of way, pop it right back uh, to everybody else in real time. I love that. I wanted to come back to something that you said about mutual aid because when you think about contractors and mutual aid crews and what it takes to engage them when they're on your property, these right. kind of tools really are super powerful in improving those kind of processes and other companies too. Uh, I did a story last year on a, a small co-op in South Carolina and the way that they were using these web-based maps to, to communicate with their telecommunication companies because they're all involved in broadband initiatives, which results in a lot of joint use pole attachments and keeping track of that has uh, always been an, an issue, but it is getting better. Yeah. Well, I see that we're, I see that we're about out of time. Uh, any closing thoughts for us, Bill? Yeah, just like, I, I love the fact that you mentioned this technology called uh, it was it's called Arceus Hub, and you know we see a lot of the wildfires in the uh, in the western part of the country, uh, and and look at what's going on in Canada as well. Uh, so Hub is one of those absolute collaboration engagement tools where people, the media, the, the you know local government, and everybody kind of gets to see what's going on right now. Those are really great. And the last thing I think about uh, engagement would be the term of social equity, where people can engage, can understand how they can engage with uh, people less fortunate than themselves, especially utilities. They'll be able to see, are we investing in those areas that have a uh, an equity issue and uh, util or are we you know are we restoring uh, equitably throughout the surface territory these are great yeah so that so i think uh, thanks pat for for uh, for working with us on working with me on this podcast and again we look forward to uh hearing from folks and getting some feedback from folks and next time we're going to be talking about understanding uh, a system of insight well, thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.